Thank you very much, Marianne. So uh, I'm Anthony Solomon. I'm going to talk about the Global Trachoma Mapping Project. Uh, as uh, some of you hopefully know, trachoma is a blinding eye condition that's caused by a bacterial infection, uh, often spread by eye-seeking flies like these muscosorbans, but also by fingers and fomites. So although it's sometimes a vector-borne disease, it doesn't strictly fit into that category alone. When people have an infection with chlamydia trachomatis in their eye, the first specific sign are these white dots or follicles, which are collections of lymphoid tissue beneath the conjunctival epithelium. And uh, we often use the designation TF for follicular trachoma. It would be helpful uh, for you in the next few slides if you can remember that designation, TF. With repeated infection over many years, as people tend to get living in an endemic community, the burden of scar that's deposited in their eyelid can lead to, in some individuals, the eyelashes being drawn inward so that they rub against the cornea. Uh, and that scars the cornea and uh, the scars impair visual acuity. But the irritation of having eyelashes rubbing against your eye mean that your eyelids will spasm shut. And this gentleman who has trichiasis, interned eyelashes, has a strip of cloth tied around his eyebrows there to keep them elevated so that he can see a little bit. He's got a pair of homemade forceps that he carries around his neck so that he can pull his eyelashes out when they become too irritating. And he's got a staff leaning against his chest there so that someone can help him get around the village. So not only is he economically impaired and disadvantaged, he's got a, a young relative who uh, is forced to stay out of school in order to help him with his mobility. At the beginning of last year, we thought that trachoma was endemic in about 53 countries, that it was the uh, oops, most common infectious cause of blindness, that it was responsible for global productivity loss of, a, of between three and six billion dollars per year, and in contrast could be eliminated as a public health problem with a, a one-time investment of just short of 750 million dollars. And that seems like a lot of money uh, until you realize that in 2011, US consumers spent $310 million on Halloween costumes for their pets. So that money is out there. And the strategy we hope to use to eliminate trachoma as a public health problem from the world is the SAFE strategy, which encapsulates surgery for people who have advanced disease, interned eyelashes, antibiotics to treat infection, and face washing and environmental improvement in order to reduce transmission. For the AF and E components, that's antibiotics, face washing and environmental improvement, WHO recommend that if the baseline district level prevalence of that sign TF in one to nine year old children is 10% or more, that those, those components are given district wide for at least three years. And that includes mass distribution of the antibiotic azithromycin. And if the baseline district level prevalence of, of TF in one to nine year olds is 30% or more, that you give those things for at least five years before you stop and review. So that immediately tells you that it's quite important to know at district level what the prevalence of follicular trachoma is, because you need that information in order to justify starting an intervention program. And at the beginning of 2012, this was the map of trachoma in Africa. Uh, you can see that the, oops, beg your pardon the uh, areas that are colored orange or red have a uh, TF prevalence in one to nine year olds of more than 10%. There's quite a lot of white uh, real estate there and they're places where we suspect trachoma. We suspected that trachoma was endemic but we didn't know what the, uh, the prevalence was. Between 2000 and 2010, about 1,067 districts had been surveyed for trachoma with another 48 being done in 2011. And that meant that if we were going to complete the baseline trachoma map, that we would be finished at that rate in 2037. And uh, the World Health Assembly has set a target of elimination as a public health problem by 2020. There's quite a lot of work to do that needed to be done quite quickly. And that work was to finish mapping in the remaining 1,238 districts in about 34 countries. And we really need to do it by 2015 so that we can plan enough time, leave enough time for five years of implementation of SAFE where it's required. And that really was the genesis for the Global Trachoma Mapping Project, 
uh, which started last year. And it started as an application from three organizations, Sightsavers, uh, LSHTM, and the International Trachoma Initiative uh, on behalf of the International Coalition for Trachoma Control to the Department for International Development in the UK. Uh, and we asked for 10.6 million pounds in order to complete the baseline trachoma map in 34 countries, uh, which seems like a lot of money, but it's 200,000 pounds less than this man uh, lost in parachute payments from Chelsea when he signed up as Spurs manager. So again, that money is, is money that is available. He doesn't seem too unhappy to have lost it. Now the strategy that we're using in order to do this mapping work is to be as fast and light as possible. We have uh, th basically three person teams doing the mapping in every location. A village guide, a grader like this one who's an ophthalmic nurse uh, called Genomo Abdallah from uh, Oromia in Ethiopia. Uh, and they undergo a, a fairly rigorous training program with standardization against internationally recognized grader trainers in order to take part in the survey. And thirdly, a recorder who records the findings of the trachoma grader and also contributes by collecting data on water and sanitation variables, which are quite important, both from a trachoma point of view and from the point of view of, of several other diseases. All the information that is captured is, is put into a purpose-built data collection app written in Open Data Kit on an Android-based uh, smartphone. Standardization has been very important. As I mentioned, all the graders are uh, examined using a, uh, a live integrator agreement exercise done on real children in the field. And that's been a, a really important part of us being able to scale up and maintain quality uh, in a way that really hasn't been done before. We piloted our, our methods in Ethiopia and then went live there in Oromia on the uh, 17th of December last year. And since then, things have gone extremely well, about as well as we could possibly have expected. And so far, uh, over the course of the last 10 months, we've completed mapping in 730 districts of our target of 1,200 and examined just short of a million people in seven countries. Our data management system is, is quite complicated and I won't bore you by going through this, but one of the keys to it that's uh, been important to our system being accepted is that all the data are owned by ministries of health in each country that we work in. And the ministries have several chances to review the data and, and they need to approve it for the data to keep moving through the system. Uh, if they have any, any queries, then they can always come back to us and uh, have a discussion. We have a full-time data manager based in Atlanta at the International Trachoma Initiative, and all the data, once they're approved by ministries, are uploaded to the Global Trachoma Atlas. And this is a, a, a country snapshot from that atlas now uh, that shows in Ethiopia the kind of uh, the, the depth of information that we're starting to generate. This shows the prevalence of active trachoma district by district, and we've completed mapping in Tigray uh, region up here in the north. We've completed field work in Oromia, and the data are, are now being approved. We've completed field work in southern nations. We're very busy in Somali region and, and quite busy in Afar as well, with still uh, Gambela and Ben Shalgul Gamuz to be done later in the year. So we've, we've innovated in a number of ways as part of this project, and the international standardization of graders has been really quite important. Our web-based Ministry of Health approval system has been also very important, and the adjustment algorithms that we're using to standardize our data against the expectation of the uh, age distribution of people has resulted in quite a significant reduction in national burden of disease compared to what, would have, what, what we have expected previously simply because people who have trachiasis are much more likely to be old, uh, and old people are much more likely to be at home. So uh, that, that's been quite important. Inter-country collaboration has been a really important feature of the project as well. Uh, the Ethiopian government, for example, has been extremely welcoming in inviting greater trainers from other countries to come and be trained and actually see proper trachoma for the first time in many cases, and, and that again, will result in, in quite a profound reduction in, in the prevalence estimates that we ultimately generate. 
And finally, the process of having this many countries involved in a, a, a coordinated program, as well as all the, the different funders who are involved in, in various places, has provided us with a, a template for coordinated action that has already led to several very large grants being uh, promised by large funders for trachoma elimination. So sh us showing that we're able to get our act together has been very good. So thank you very much for listening. I'd be happy to take questions, and I would like to acknowledge the three organisations who put the grant together, the International Coalition for Trachoma Control, uh, DFID, and the Wellcome Trust, who have not funded this project but fund me as an individual at the London School. So thank you.